Bugün sizlerimizin bizden ümitip ki doktorantura bağdalamasına kalayet sügü bulatın dağı jönünde sessiya jürgüzü de uyğardık. Sessiyanın barlıq ağılışın tülünde jürek, bırak kazır sizlerimizin üç tülde amandası ötene de uyladın. Trastı vizyayma naşı kandidatı, uçasnik eti sessiyi ne zavut Gunira Kanay, ya kuz doktorant. Высшей школе образования Назарбаев университет. И сегодня мы бы хотели с вами поговорить на тему, как поступить на программу докторантуры Высшей школы образования. Зачем в первую очередь туда поступать? И во-вторых, как? Вот. Great, hello everyone. My name is Gulmira Kanai, and I'm a postdoctoral scholar at the Graduate School of Education, Nazarbayev University. And uh, today we are going to run a session on um, why do we need to uh, do a PhD in education and then how to apply it to the PhD in education program at NUGC. So uh, I shall run this session in English as we have applicants from different parts of the world. Hopefully uh, many more people will join us in time being. But before uh, I start this session, I just wanted to clarify if uh, all of you are planning to apply to education PhD program or uh, um, maybe some of you are interested in master's programs. So if you could just, you know, introduce yourselves shortly and then, you know, explain why you want to apply to PhD in education program. Uh, is there anyone who would like to start? You know, you can raise your hand and, and you know, begin if you want. Yeah, sure, please. Hi. Hi, uh, everyone. Um, I can call you. Hello, Gumira. And then this is Gumira. Yeah. Um, from Astana. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm a candidate in the Southwest University, uh, Chongqing, China. This is my second mm -hmm. year. Because of the family problems, I cannot continue my PhD in the other country, I mean, the other places. So that's a one reason why uh, I choose Nazarbayev University for my further education. Um, and then another thing is that actually I'm, uh, my field in the another university for holding my PhD is that educational leadership and management. And I did um, research about the, how the leadership influence for the teacher job satisfaction in the public universities in Kazakhstan mm -hmm. and, the, and in, the, the la, in the summertime 2019, mm -hmm. then um, I did a project and then this, uh, the, the research, I did research, and this research including two universities, two public universities in Kazakhstan. One is in Almaty City, another one is uh, Eurasia University. Mm -hmm. And this paper also attended the International Conference of Science and Education in Dubai, mm -hmm. held in uh, January in this year. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give up the PhD, that's why I really want to continue in the same program mm -hmm. that I planned. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else interested in sharing their experience? Why they want to apply to PhD program? Is there anyone else? No. I cannot see people elsewhere. I think they are all doing audio. Okay, great. So the reason I decided to talk about PhD, uh, you know, why to apply to the PhD program. Uh, you know, generally, I think it's because my own PhD experience is, you know, I've completed my PhD study last year in, um, in summer. So I think my memories about my PhD background is so fresh. Therefore, I just wanted to share with you my own personal experience and then, you know, uh, help you think, you know, some of you who um, still are thinking, why should I apply to the PhD program? think twice you know <laughs> therefore if you if you uh, don't mind uh, i shall share my screen with you and if you have any concerns or uh, questions you can always you know write in the chat i think it's somewhere here below but all the questions and answers will shall take as soon as i you know finish my presentation so um i'm going to share the screen uh, great i hope now you're able to see my screen. Can you? Yes. Yeah, right. So the topic is why PhD in education and how do we apply 
to the PhD in education program. So I think I'm very lucky today to co convene this session with several of my colleagues. Uh, first is Aidana Anastrigebaeva. She's a senior manager for academic and student affairs at NUGEC. So I think she will be able to help me answer the questions concerning the academic experience at NUGEC. And then uh, Janna Adinbaeva, she's a senior manager at the admissions department. Um, say hi to Janna. And Janna is uh, responsible for the uh, uh, application process to the PhD in education program at NUGEC. Then we should have Asia Elkenov at some point. She is also a manager at the admissions department and she's responsible for the master's program application process. Uh, and then we uh, hopefully have uh, Gulnara Namuseva who shall join us a bit later and she is a PhD candidate and hopefully uh, she will be able to respond to some of your questions concerning uh, the experience of being a PhD student at NUGC. So in general, I want to cover these, uh, you know, three topics. Why PhD in education? Why does PhD, uh, what does PhD in education entail? And how to apply to the PhD program at NUGC? And then question and answer session. So as you may you know, know, as uh, many of you I hope are planning to uh, apply to the PhD program, doctoral education is about asking hard questions, pushing frontiers and solving problems. I think this definition I like most of all. And PhD you know, became more of a commodity these recent years, I think, because um, completing PhD is about creating knowledge, they say. But then I could argue, I think it's, it's, I think doing PhD is more about, you know, standing on the shoulders of the giants when you sort of add up to the existing knowledge rather than create the knowledge. That could be the case, uh, particularly in humanities and arts. Uh, I'm not sure about the sciences though. And uh, PhD is about, you know, discovering new things for yourselves uh, in a specific area, you know, and then developing new skills. And I totally agree that PhD uh, experience allows you to develop a lot of transferable skills that you can use in, in different other, uh, you know, areas of your life in, in future. And as you may all know, I mean, research and development has become one of the key drivers of innovation and change in the you know, 20th century, you know, 21st century. So according to the UNESCO report back in 2018, around $2 trillion you know, dollars were spent on developing research capacity. So in a way, you know, developing future scholars is, is um, a matter of importance both locally, nationally and globally. So I think that's, that's uh, one of the reasons why, you know, we should increase research capacity here in Kazakhstan as well. And I'm, I'm very happy that our Ministry of Education is investing a lot of money into research these recent days. And, and that's another driver for, you know, applying to a PhD in education program um, particularly. But I think we are all driven by different kinds of motives, you know, to apply to the PhD program. As I, I mean, my personal experience at least also indicates that we have different motives. First, for example, I found this very interesting, you know, um, uh, quotes from people who, uh, you know, did apply to PhD programs. Some of them felt that they sort of, you know, met the dead end in their, you know, recent, you know, uh, current jobs. So they wanted to add more skills. Some of them wanted to swap their careers, you know, some of them chose, you know, PhD uh, as it provides transferable skills, as I mentioned earlier. And some of them uh, felt that, you know, they did well in their master's programs, therefore they decided to continue doing research as they found it very interesting. And I myself, I think I also was uh, very much fascinated about research during my, uh, you know, master's uh, degree and therefore I also decided to, uh, you know, that was one of the motives for me to apply to the PhD program. And some of them feel that they can afford it and therefore they see it as one, you know, uh, as one type of qualification and therefore they, uh, you know, uh, go for it. Uh, but interestingly, you know, uh, PhD is, as you may all know, is about, uh, you know, completing an independent research, it's a substantial research which usually, uh, you know, uh, you perform in the form of a PhD dissertation and, you know, PhD dissertation usually, you know, um, is about, you know, writing around 60 to, 60 to 80,000 words, which is around 250 pages of A4, you know, format book. And that's not an easy endeavor, I must say. 
and it's P doing PhD is largely about self-guided learning. So there, you will not have you know tutors or teachers standing next to you and helping you out, as you will be on your own all the time, many of the times I must say. But then uh, a PhD is also doing PhD is also about building trust and managing relations with your supervisors and advisors, because those people become the key people in your you know research. Um, uh, a life as, as they will be guiding you and then they will uh, be helping you to find your own niche they say so you know um, there are lots of different networks in in in, um, uh, in research and therefore you have to find your own networking future and your you know supervisor can be sort of a bridge between your uh, you know current state of being and your future you know academic career therefore I think it's it's very important to build relations with your supervisor and manage that relation throughout your you know academic uh, you know phd life as well as beyond it so those are the key things that i've learned throughout my phd experience and here i just want to show you this funny graph i'm sure you've all sort of many of you have already seen this graph but i think this is you know um this graph you know clearly explains how it goes when you become a phd student so at the beginning you might have sort of um, high level of motivation and opti be optimistic about your research area and be driven by the idea of I'm going to research this topic and you know I'll create knowledge and, and so on and so forth but closer to the second year or the third year of your PhD study when you will be collecting data or even analyzing the data you will sort of come into the understanding of you know you know uh, a pessimism where you understand that you are not the only person doing this stuff and and you know basically analyzing your data is not that easy and that's the point when you hit the valley of uh, as you can see <laughs> the valley of very difficult times when you have very low motivation when you might experience anxiety and fear and uncertainty is not that easy so you have to be you know be able to manage not only your time or you know uh, uh, your work, but also you have to manage your emotional being, you know, so to go through all of those uh, challenges that might be there. But I, I have to highlight that PhD experience is solely personal. So it might be my personal experience, but it might be, you know, but some other people might have different experiences. So, and then closer to the end of third year and the beginning of the fourth year, when you will start finding some some very interesting findings from your data, you know, after the data analysis, you will be reaching the point of, you know, informed optimism when you will start seeing the light at the end of the, you know, corridor tunnel. So therefore, I think, I think uh, there is something uh, uh, to take into account from this uh, graph, I think. But I'm not saying that you are going to have the same experience as I had. So therefore, um, it's just an example from my personal experience. Uh, just a second. Yeah, next one. So, uh, well, in order to complete your, you know, 60 to 80,000 words dissertation in future, you have to have one key thing that's focus. Focus, focus and focus. If you don't have focus, you will not be able to, you know, complete your PhD thesis in a, in a, in a timely manner. Therefore, it is very important that you sort of organize your space, your time in a way that you can, you know, have a block of time for you know solely writing up your thesis and then of course you have to you know uh, have self-discipline as i've mentioned earlier time management skills and, and and of course resilience to go through all of those challenges that might be there but but that might not be there as well so it again depends on our personal experiences so as you can see from this funny meme you know <laughs> although we are all quarantined now at this moment but uh, not many of us are able to manage our time properly so so that's a very funny um example to draw on uh, now I'd, I'd like to talk about a little bit about our PhD program here at NUGCE. First of all, um, we don't have EDD, which is uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, more for the practitioners rather than uh, you know, uh, full time uh, for the people who are looking for a, a full time program. So we have only one type of program, which is full time uh, Doctor of Philosophy and Education program. Uh, but in future, we might have maybe uh, part time programs, but it's still uh, 
and it's a lot of uh, you know discussion. So at this point, all we offer is Doctor of Philosophy in Education. It's a four years full time study program. You know, full coverage of tuition fee, monthly stipend around one hundred thousand tinggi. You know, possibly above that, you know, monthly stipend, you will be able to have possibility to work as a research assistant or teaching assistant, depending, you know, a both. And you know, and that we might add up another, uh, you know, income to your uh, monthly stipend, stipend. But unfortunately, you will not be able to work. That's the key thing. That's the key message. It's a full-time study, so you have to be based in uh, Nur Sultan city, and you have to do your PhD study full-time. That's the key message. And and there is also a possibility to apply to housing on campus. So I, I think I've never, you know, it, I I it was. There are problems I know in the US where they cover the full, you know, full PhD program, but um, it doesn't happen very often. So I think in, in that sense, our, our program is unique as you have an opportunity to complete free of church, you know, program and then above that have some sort of, you know, uh, income uh, throughout your PhD. Um, Hello. Yes, yeah. And what else? Um, yeah, so uh, there are some other, uh, you know, bonuses uh, at the end of or the beginning of your second year, you will be able to travel uh, to one of our partner universities. If you're doing research in secondary education, then you shall be able to spend one semester at the University of Cambridge Faculty of Education. Or if you're looking at higher education, tertiary education, you will be able to spend a semester at the University of Pennsylvania, which is in the US. And then, of course, you will, be ha you will be able to have access to the ongoing university-wide lectures and seminars conducted by the world-renowned speakers. And you will be able to have, you know, take up elective classes at the Graduate School of Public Policy and Graduate School of Business. And of course, you will have access to all campus facilities, including library and, you know, um, sports center and so on and so forth. And uh, first year, I think, and the second year of the PhD study, uh, if I'm wrong, I think Aidana will help me with this, um, entails, you know, attending full-time four courses. As you can see, the list is long, so <laughs> and full, that, that's why this program is full-time program, not part-time program. And of course, the completion of your PhD dissertation. Those are the two key things that you will be doing throughout your PhD study. And application to the PhD program at NUGC, I think you should uh, check our website, which is www.admissions.nu.edu.kz. You need to you know, create your uh, personal uh, account and then you know, fill in the online application form and then provide all of the documents as indicated below, which is notarized copy of your identity or passport and CV then notarized copies of your diplomas and transcripts and IELTS, a TOEFL test, uh, you know, as you can see here, you know, more detailed information is provided on our website. Uh, you know, personal statement, that is another document that you need to provide, which outlines why you want to apply to this uh, program. And then there is a separate document, which is one of the most important one, uh, and it's called a written research proposal. And then you need to provide three letters of recommendation, and you know admission committee can invite you to an interview by skype and uh, and all documents should be you know submitted in english or certified uh, uh, provide a certified english translation before the deadline what else um as I mentioned earlier, one of the key documents that you need to submit with your you know, application package is the research proposal. I think many of you are very interested in this particular uh, document. So um, in your research proposal, you need to indicate the aim of your research, background of your research, which is basically, you know, do some literature review. Uh, uh, you know, indicate clearly your research questions if you have sub research questions then indicate those, then you need to write methodology, indicate the sampling that you want to use in your future research. Uh, some of you might be interested in doing quantitative study, then it might be helpful to, you know, at least indicate your expected analysis, what kind of analysis you would like to use if it's applicable to your research. And if it's again applicable, you can also indicate expected outcome of your research, you know, as you envisage it and, and, and then list of references. Uh, and again, as you can see from this funny meme on uh, the right side of the, the presentation, the slide, 
you know, you can submit your proposal, but it doesn't mean that you cannot change it. You know, as, as soon as you're accepted as, as a candidate, you can always, you know, revisit your, with the help of your supervisor or advisor, you can always revisit your PhD proposal and change it, you know, depending on your own interests. So take that into consideration and be open, you know, to explore different uh, topics as well. Uh, I mean, I, I had so many uh, friends who decided to change the topic of, your, of their study, you know, even in year three. So that was quite a big issue, as you may know, but still they managed it. So uh, don't be afraid that, you know, you provide, you propose one topic and end up doing another kind of topic, which this is normal, and, you know. You know. So, uh, in conclusion, I just want to ask you these two key questions. I mean, first of all, I think you need to think for yourself, why do you want to pursue a PhD, first of all? And then, you know, does PhD represent your best professional in doing a PhD, you know, represents your professional, intellectual and personal interest? If not, then think twice, because, you know, it's not easy you know, to pursue a PhD degree, but as long as you are interested, you know, highly motivated and, you know, interested in, you know, making an impact, maybe long-term impact in a, you know, on a group of people or a society in general, then go for it. So that's, that's my advice. And I think there are a couple of uh, more very interesting sessions that are coming up very soon. If you look at our website, uh, on the 28th of April, we shall have another session with Professor Noreen Durrani, who will be talking, I guess, more, um, uh, uh, you know, um, generally about how to apply and maximize your chances of getting an offer. Therefore, I, I would urge you to, uh, you know, attend this session and, uh, you know, ask questions from Professor Noreen Durrani if you have any after this session. What else? Let's start the Q&A then. Uh, as I've mentioned, we have several colleagues who are hopefully here and we are very happy to answer your questions. Just a second, let me finish this uh, screen sharing if I, if I can do it myself. Oops. How can we, what it says? Aidana, 